Today I'm going to talk about some special segments in a circle and these formulas are going to help you find the different lengths. So the first one deals with, this is page 31 in your unit 7 packet. The theorem deals with two intersecting chords. So when you have two chords that intersect somewhere inside the circle, this is going to allow us to use this formula here which says that the product of A and B must equal the product of C and D. And recognize that A plus B is the length of one chord and C plus D is the length of another. So I'm just going to go ahead and work through the examples that I have on this page to show you how easy it is to find the different lengths. So if I want to solve for X, that means that 6 times 4 is going to equal x times 3 and then I could just solve for x by dividing by 3 and my answer would have to be 8. So that's kind of a handy way to come up with some different lengths when you're given two intersecting chords in a circle. So if I look at example 2 I want to determine x again. Well this time they gave me the length of the entire chord and you really need to separate these chords into the two pieces formed by that intersection. So I'm going to go ahead and call the adjacent length next to x. I'm going to call that 8 minus x. So what this will allow me to do now is to get the product 8 minus x times x and set that equal to <clears throat> 3 times 4. Now when I do this, I am going to get a quadratic. So this is going to give me 8x minus x squared equals 12. So let's see, if I set that equal to 0 and put everything on the side that makes the quadratic term positive, I'm going to end up with this, and I believe it does factor into x minus 6 and x minus 2. Well, that means x could be 6 or x could be 2. And because these diagrams are not really drawn to scale, it's really hard to determine which length x would be. So I'm just going to put 2 or 6. I mean, it does look like 2 is the answer, but again, not really drawn to scale. Now, example 3. This one can be done two different ways. We could use the chord triple theorem, which tells me that this has to be a right angle because that contains the center and the chords being bisected. And we could draw in the radius, and let me just show you what that's going to look like. Um, if I draw this radius in, the length of that radius is actually given to me by these two values here. So the length of that radius is 6. So now I could use the Pythagorean theorem. I could also recognize that this has to be a 30, 60, 90 because of that 2 to 1 or 1 to 2 ratio. The short leg uh, is 3, and 2 times the short leg is the hypotenuse. So I could figure out that x has to be the long leg, which would be 3 root 3. So there's lots of ways. I could do the Pythagorean theorem. x squared plus 3 squared equals 6 squared. I should be getting 3 root 3. Now let me just go ahead and show you how to do this problem without using the chord triple theorem. So I'm going to erase this and show you how to do it with the theorem or the formula that we were using previously. So if I know that the radius is 6, then I know that this length that goes all the way up to the intersection point has to be 9. So I could say that x times x is equal to 9 times 3, and then I could take the square root of 27 and end up with the same exact answer. So sometimes you're going to have a variety of ways that will give you the answer, and that is kind of nice. So this next theorem talks about two secant segments. Now a secant goes through the circle and it intersects the circle at two different points. So sometimes these can be lines, but they can also be referred to as segments if they don't continue and go on and on. So what happens here is I can use this formula. I'm just going to go ahead and put a box around it and just show you how to use it using this example. So this entire 
secant length. If I add 4 plus 5, I get 9. If I multiply that whole secant length by just the external piece, meaning that piece on the outside of the circle, which would be 4, that's going to equal the other entire secant length, which again is 3 plus x, or you could say x plus 3, and that's going to get multiplied by the outside piece here, which is just 3. So that is the formula for finding the value of x. So I'm going to go ahead and just simplify a little bit. So I'm going to do 3x, or not 3x, but 36 equals, now I could distribute, or I could divide by 3. And that will allow me to get my answer, which is 9. So there's my answer for that example. And these theorems really come from me drawing different segments to make triangles and show you similar triangles, and the corresponding sides are proportional. But that's how these equations um, are formed. It's really by using similar triangles. So the next one talks about a secant segment and a tangent segment. Well, the tangent, and this is supposed to be tangent, it was not supposed to go inside the circle at all, so I'll say that's the point of tangency. Because the whole segment, tangent segment, and the whole thing is on the outside, instead of saying the whole times the outside, it's just the tangent squared. So this problem is going to be the whole length, which is 7, times the external piece, which is 3. And that's going to equal x squared. Well, when I take the square root of 21, I just get the square root of 21. I'm not going to use plus or minus because these are all designated to be lengths. And so that's my answer for that example. Now, this next example, same idea. I'm going to take my tangent length 10 and square it. And I'm going to set that equal to the whole length, which in this case would be 4x times the outside length, which is x. So 100 is going to equal 4x squared. So I can divide by 4 and then take the square root. And that actually comes out nice. It is plus or minus 5, but I'm not using the negative because I'm looking for a length, and that has to be a positive value. So that's how I would use these theorems. Now, Let's take a look at page 32. I'm just going to go through again and show you how you could solve for x on these problems. So for this one, it looks like I have two intersecting chords, and they intersect here. So you really just want to look at the two pieces that make up the chord and multiply those. So I'm just going to multiply those together. And then the other two lengths that make up the other chord would be here. So let's just see what that looks like. Now, I could use a calculator or I could simplify this. So let's see what happens if I simplify. So I'm going to go ahead and reduce these by 2. So that's going to be a 2 and a 3. So I'm just going to call this 81 over 2. And this is going to equal 9x over 2. Well, I could multiply both sides by 2. And that will allow me to get rid of these fractions if I just show that. And then my answer is just going to be 9. And I, I guess I could show the dividing by 9. So that is what I'm getting for number 1. Let's take a look at number 2. Now number 2, these are two uh, secant segments. So I really just want to take, I'm going to look at this whole length, which is 3x. So I'm going to do 3x times the outside 2x. And that looks like a minus. I need to put parentheses. And then set that equal to this whole length is 18, and that's going to get multiplied by the outside, which is 3. So let's see what that will give me. So it looks like I have a 6x squared equaling a 54. So I'm going to divide by 6, and I'll take the square root. And technically, mathematically, it is plus or minus 3, but of course, I'm only looking for that positive value. So that one came out nice as well. All right, let's look at number three. So this is going to be the tangent and the secant segment. So I'm going to take that tangent and square it and set that equal to the whole secant segment times the outside length of that secant segment. So this is 36 
which is equal to 4x squared. Now if I divide by 4 and I take the square root, again I happen to get the plus or minus 3, so the answer is just 3. So those were similar answers. Now for number 4, I have some decimals, which again I could definitely change that into a fraction or I could use a calculator. Um, I'm going to go ahead, these are intersecting chords, so I'm going to call that 5 over 2 times x, and I'll just call this 8 times 2, which is going to be 16, so I have 5x over 2 equals 16. Well, I'm just going to cross multiply because that's the easiest thing without using a calculator, and then I'm going to divide. So I'm getting 32 over 5. Now that's the same thing as 6.4 if you use the decimal. So for number five, this one is a little bit tricky because, again, we are given the whole chord having, having a length of 10. So just this piece right here is going to be represented by 10 minus x. So I want to take those two lengths that give me that 10 and multiply them. And then I'm going to take the other two lengths, 3 and 8, and multiply them. So again, that's going to give me a quadratic. And so when I solve, I'm going to set it equal to 0 and put everything on the side to make that quadratic term positive. And that will give me my factors, which would be x minus 6 and x minus 4. So it looks like I'm going to have two answers. And again, can't really determine which one it would be. And so I'm going to put both answers for that one. Now, let's look at 6. So this is two secant segments. So for this one, just be careful. So I'm going to take the outside piece, 3, and I'm going to multiply it by this entire length. Now, I'm going to add like terms. That's 2x plus 2. And so I'm going to write that here, 2x plus 2. And then for the other secant segment, I'm going to take the outside, and I'm going to multiply it by the entire, which would be 4x plus 4. So 4x plus 4. Now what I want to do is I want to distribute. So that's 6x plus, whoops, not 4. 6x plus 6 equals 4x squared plus 4x. So I'm going to set this equal to 0. So let's just get everything on the side of the quadratic. So that's going to be 4x squared minus 2x minus 6. Well, I can divide everything by 2 or factor out a 2. It really doesn't matter. Let's just factor out the 2. So if I take out a 2, just to make it a little bit easier, you don't really have to do this, but I just think it makes the factoring easier. So that's going to look like, bring down my 2, I am going to have um, 2x and x and a 3 and a 1. So I want to put those where I can get that middle term. It looks like I'm going to need these signs. So I don't do anything with this 2 because it doesn't have a variable. So I'm going to actually set this equal to 0 and this equal to 0. Now when I solve, I'm getting two answers. I am getting either 3 over 2 or negative 1. So let's go back up and see. Well, since x is really um, a length, I can't have that negative. So 3 over 2 would be the only answer that would make sense in this problem. So hopefully that was something that you understood. Now if you look at number 7, this is the tangent and the secant segment. So I'm going to square the tangent and I'm going to set that equal to the outside times the entire length would be x plus 4. So I could get 64 equals 4 times x plus 4. I could distribute or I could divide by 4 and get 16 equals x plus 4 and then subtract and get 12. This is your two secant segments. So again, I am going to take the outside 8 and multiply that by the whole secant segment x plus 8. Set that equal to the outside 7 multiply that by the whole secant segment length, which is x plus 10, and then solve that and see what you come up with. So hit continue when you have the answer. Okay, well hopefully you got 6, and that is correct. Alright, let's look at this one. 
Now, this is one where, again, you could use the Pythagorean theorem, and this was supposed to go all the way to the end. I just think that kind of got cut off a little bit. But you could use the Pythagorean theorem because that has to be a right angle. Or you could recognize that the radius is going to be 8. So if I use the two intersecting chords, they intersect at this spot. So this is the length 12 and 4 that I want to use. So 12 times 4 is going to be x times x. So that's 48 is equal to x squared. Well, when I take the square root, I get plus or minus 16 times 3. So 4 root 3, and I'm only going to use the positive value. All right, so one more. I'm going to go through this last one. This is, again, tangent and a secant segment. So I'm going to take the tangent squared, and I'm going to show you kind of a cool way to do this without the use of a calculator. So I know it's the outside, 12, times the whole thing, which is 39. Well, let's just suppose I don't want to use a calculator, but I want the answer in exact simplest radical form. So what I could do is individually, since these are all being multiplied, I can individually take the square root. So I know that 12 is going to be the square root of 4 times the square root of 3. And I know 39 is the square root of 3 times the square root of 13. Now I can basically simplify. This is just 2. These two will give me just 3. And that is left under the radical. So the answer is just 6 times the square root of 13. And of course, algebraically, it would be plus or minus, but it doesn't make sense to have a negative length. And so that's my answer. So that's kind of a nice way to get the answer without having to do so much math or use a calculator. So I'm hoping that you understood how to apply those formulas to get the different lengths of those special segments in a circle. The practice that you should do is on page 33, and the next video is the last video in this unit. It is going to be concentrated on the algebraic equation of a circle. Thank you for watching.